welcome and thank you all for coming out on this fairly miserable Melbourne afternoon. To those who've never been to the gallery before, greetings. To those who've been to the gallery in the past, welcome back. It's a delight to see you all here this afternoon to enjoy with us this exhibition of John Dent's work. In looking at John's work, we see uh, the great influence of the period that he spent in France. So we see the colour, we see the light, and we see the ambience of John's paintings come through. These works were very specially selected, specifically because they are the early works of John's career. As you will read when you get around to the marvellous essay in the catalogue, the early influences were the great Australian artists, Fred Williams, Roger Kemp, George Balderson, John Olson. That's four of the greatest artists who ever picked a paintbrush up in this country. John moves to France and he works at La Courier, which is, I think, unquestionably the greatest studio making prints, lithographic prints, anywhere on the planet. I need only mention two names, Picasso and Matisse. But we can move through there to Bonnard, Vuillard, Giacometti, and, I could, and Dali. I could go on with a roll call of the great and famous. The work of the Courier is astonishing, and it gave John an extraordinary training. So when we look at John's works, we look at them through the prism of subtle influences of some of the greatest French artists, interspersed with influences from some of the greatest artists internationally. What I'm going to do is to give you a roll call of the collections that John is included in. We'll start with the Australian National Gallery in Canberra. The director, Gerard Vaughan, will be joining us later, former director. I then move on to the National Gallery of Victoria, where Gerard was also the director for about a dozen years. The Art Gallery of New South Wales, Parliament House, Canberra, as well as the National Museum of New Zealand in Wellington, and astonishingly of all, the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. There are very few Australian artists who are included in that astonishing collection. I'm not going to bore you with the next 20 collections that John is included in, but this is an artist whose contribution is very significant, both for painting as well as for lithography. I'm going to speak briefly about the phenomenal triptych Natura Mort. I had a restorer in here on Monday who looked up and she said, Michael, you've got an astonishing Brett Whiteley triptych. And I said, no, but the artist is going to be delighted <laughs> that that particular comparison was made. And it's not by Francis Bacon either. If it was by Whiteley, it's worth six, seven million. If it's by Francis Bacon, it's worth 60 to 70 million. By John Dent, it's eminently approachable. And anybody who feels like putting it where it rightfully belongs, which is in one of the great public collections of this country, come and tap me on the shoulder and talk to me about endeavouring to see if that can happen. This is an astonishing work of art. And to be ranked with the two artists I mentioned previously, gives it its place in the firmament. Then move across to Natura Mort L. This picture just jumps off the wall. Every piece, every object in it is so perfectly positioned. This does not happen by accident. It happens because the artist has taken the time and the trouble to put things just where he wants them. So when we look around this exhibition and we move into the middle gallery, and the middle gallery is where 
I've hung John's semi-abstracted displaced objects. We see echoes of people like Lucio Fontana, in particular the great Italian artist Giorgio Morandi. But above all, we see dent. We see subtlety in colour, astonishing texture, and objects that look commonplace, look easy to put into that position, but they require an astonishing eye and formidable skill. So we here have glimpses of Bonnard, we have glimpses, little pastiche of we are a hint of Batiste lurking around in elements of colour. We could also see the overtones, in particular, of Georges Balderson, who John worked with uh, when he started in the studio back in 1976. <coughs> but above all, we see John Dent's early work, which was powerfully, very powerfully, supported by René. So what I'm going to do is now introduce you to somebody who has known John and René even longer than I have. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Mem Kirby to open this exhibition. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, and children.